our point of view, there's no more pervasive form of globalization than climate change because the atmosphere recognizes no borders. The accumulated greenhouse gas emissions from the last two centuries of population, agricultural, and industrial growth move freely across the planet. Since these emissions cannot be contained in one country or excluded from another, their unmitigated growth is a worldwide threat. The crisis of securing a sustainable, clean energy future is global. We need common rules for all of us, worker protections, investor protections, and environmental protections. But for the working people to prosper in the global economy, we need more than rules. We need thoughtful strategies at the national level, strategies that work for all of us, that create wealth, but more importantly, share that wealth equitably, combined with a global strategy for combating global change, climate change. You see, our nation can lead a new technological revolution in the way that energy is generated and used, a revolution that will benefit the world as a whole and which can be a foundation of a revival of the middle class in the United States. But to accomplish this, we need a strategic approach centered on domestic investment in new technologies and good jobs. And we need to lead in fostering a shared international response to this issue. Now, we're a big society and a big economy. We need a new economic strategy that makes our economy the driving force of the world economy, but not as a borrower of money or a center for investment banking or a holder of patent rights. We must be a provider of critical goods and services to what will likely be the mega economies of the future in India and China. You see, if we lead a transformation in how we generate and use energy, we'll be at the heart of building construction and transportation and manufacturing processes, as well as the energy industry themselves. See, our members and workers everywhere, with their knowledge, with their skills, with their expertise, have valuable insight to offering for the greening of the workplace and the community. The greening of the economy means that every job that contributes to a low carbon future is a green job. But at the same time, investors should be thinking about how labor and government fit into this picture. The labor movement is the primary source of advanced training for construction workers. And we're ready to ramp up, but we need business and government partners. Together, we need to train workers in the poorest and most marginalized part of the country to take part in the great task ahead. And together, we need to improve our public schools so that young people leave school ready to take part in advanced job training programs. Finally, we believe Congress must be an unambiguous in establishing an environmental economic development policy that seeks to increase family income more equitably and protects the interests of working families, both by creating green jobs and by protecting our, the air that our children breathe, the water that we drink, and most importantly, by ensuring that we do not take away the ability of our children to prosper into the future. So we're at a crossroads, a crossroads of opportunity for domestic investments in innovation and new technology and energy efficiency that'll save jobs and create new jobs and new industry and revitalize American manufacturing. Now there's no guarantee that these will be good jobs or that the investments will be made here unless we all fight to make that happen. If we believe that government economic development is good for the nation, environmental economic development is good for this nation, then good jobs and green jobs 
should be and must be our fight. 